Life as Kia Cher knew it changed on November 26, 2008, when her husband, Alan, and 13-year-old daughter, Naomi, were shot and killed by terrorists in Mumbai, India. Kia's response to this heart-wrenching tragedy was to take a stand to honor the life we all share. Today, she teaches compassion and forgiveness. Kia is a co-founder of One Life Alliance, one Life Alliance is a nonprofit organization based in the U.S. with a sister organization in Mumbai, India. Kia has been speaking to interfaith and non-sectarian groups as well as peace organizations throughout the past two years. I'm very humbled and honored to be with you all tonight and very grateful for your presence here to celebrate the power of forgiveness I think that's been demonstrated so clearly with each and every one of the speakers and singers that forgiveness is a bridge to peace and to love I I'll share with you my story. You saw pictures of my husband and daughter. We were living at a meditation sanctuary in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia for 11 years. Naomi was basically raised there. It was a meditation sanctuary for modern meditation, high-tech meditation using sound technology and teaching holistic lifestyle. And the spiritual director there, Master Charles Cannon, had studied in India for 12 years and his teacher had asked him to modernize meditation for Westerners. And so he created synchronicity, high-tech meditation. And he was invited to India to share that with the people of Mumbai. And my husband organized that retreat. And my daughter was sponsored to go along. She was 13 years old as an educational experience. She was in the process of applying for a full scholarship to a girls' boarding school in upstate New York whose motto was, be the change you wish to see in the world. So anyway, um, you all know what happened. And I, in that state of, um, it's hard to explain, but um, Reverend David, I think you know what that is like. There are these moments where we're just ripped wide apart. The heart is shattered and um, there's such a total, um, I would just say, uh, explosion within actually because I was killed right along with them. Um, those bullets killed Alan and Naomi but they also killed me and the life that I knew. But yet, I'm still here. I have two beautiful sons who've been a great comfort to me, and they're part of the reason that I was able to carry forth, actually. I had a spiritual community. But it was in that those moments that the words of Christ came to me of, forgive them, they know not what they do. And I, reflecting on that now, I realized that was an invitation to open to a greater vision, a greater vision to create a positive outcome. And right away, and I could really relate to what you were saying, Reverend, about that love and, and wanting to hold my husband and daughter close to me with that love, because the opposite of forgiveness, the unforgiven is anger and hatred and maybe desire for revenge and that completely closes down any possibility for love. And so then what can I give? And what am I left with? That. It's like very toxic, very poison, mainly painful, very painful. It separates me from Alan and Naomi, separates me from them. So there was an opportunity because they were two of the six Americans who were killed in Mumbai 
and their pictures were all over the news, and there was a lot of media in that, and I did share my experience. And so I was offered an, a, a major opportunity to share something with the world. And so we wanted to continue that conversation, that life is sacred and that we must honor it in ourselves and in each other, and to invite the world to join us in that, and to create an organization, to create a context and a structure and a platform for that conversation. And it's really been quite amazing in the past four years. I have no experience whatsoever <laughs> um, really speaking before this, no, um, running any kind of organization, no. I was a full-time mother and a housewife, and I was a staff member at the sanctuary, but I had no position of authority whatsoever. So I, I felt quite inadequate to the task. I happened to hear, um, it's so wonderful that um, our, the singer sang that Leonard Cohen song, because there's a Leonard Cohen song that really helped me in those times when I felt so inadequate to the task. And I know many of you must know that song, and it's Ring the Bells. It's Ring the Bells that still can ring. <laughs> Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything, and that's how the light gets in. I'll tell you, that really kept me going, because I felt that crack. That crack was going all the way through me. And just like Matthew Fox said, forgiveness is an ongoing process. I open to the possibility to forgive, and I am willing to forgive. And every time, it just brings me back to love. I'm choosing love. When we choose to forgive, we choose love. And then we are able to be love, to give love, like Sarah so beautifully does. And that's a fulfilling experience, but I, it's a choice, I'll, I'll be honest with you, that I make every day, because every day I wake up and Alan and Naomi, in the physical form, are not with me. And I feel their absence, and I feel the tears come, even now. But if I want to feel their presence, I forgive, and I experience love. Love never dies. And my teacher, Master Charles, said that death follows birth. Life is eternal. And so I choose to focus on life and to affirm life and to celebrate life, which I feel this whole evening has been, is a celebration of life. It's this sacred life that we all share. And I do feel we're all in this together. It's a major collaboration. And I've had an opportunity to reach out to Mumbai in India. We are working in schools. We are working in the slums, sharing this exact same message, because this needs to be a part of education, so that we not only learn from our minds, we live from our hearts. We include education of the heart. And that's my main focus right now. So cities like Baltimore, Maryland, where there's quite a lot of violence, are introducing this message. A school in Mumbai, 200 students took a pledge to honor the oneness and sacredness of life for 30 days. 5,000 people in Mexico City took a pledge that was on the radio every day for, with a focus that we created for 30 days. So there's real possibility here. And everybody I've met tonight, I invite you to, we can work together on this. We were talking. We can share this. We can strengthen it. And then we'll have more and more to celebrate. More and more love is generated, and it needs to be generated in the places that need it the most. And that's why I couldn't focus on hatred. There was such a lack of love and compassion that what was needed most is love. And so that's my choice, and that will continue to be my choice really every moment. And and I'll share with you this quote that also I love because of the image of it. And it was a, a French um, writer or philosopher, Alphonse Carr, said, I am so grateful thorns have roses. <laughs> Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Thorns have roses. <laughs> so let's focus on the roses. And let's smell those roses and 
shower our world with those petals. Thank you. present this award to Kia and we are so grateful for all the good work that you're doing and we're so happy that you are with us tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.